Hey y'all, N4H&H &H here with the ham clock. I just want to show you something new in the latest update. Now, I've already shot a video showing how to update and that update was to 3.02. And the way you know that it's ready to update or that there's an update pending is simply right here, the version number uh, will turn red. All right, and then you just click on version number and it will offer to do the update. Uh, and actually, too, see on boot up, it, it, it'll detect and offer to do the update. So I've already updated this one, but what I want to show you is, uh, and I'm, I, to do it, I'm going to have to shut it down. I'm going to go back into the setup. This is the one that's running on my computer. So I'm using Ubuntu to simulate Linux. Uh, so let me get it back up and running again. Just bear with me a moment. I have to type like the old uh, DOS days to... Uh, to bring it back up here. So you, if you've watched my previous videos about this, uh, you know that I'm running three different versions of ham clock. One is the self-contained HF clock that you, is plug and play. The other is the one from Innovato, innovato.com. And it's a, uh, it's a little computer called the Quadra and it comes with the ham clock already on it. But the one I'm running now is uh, is a version that runs on a PC, but you have to use Ubuntu. I'm using Windows 10. Ubuntu simulates the Linux operating system. Okay, so going through the setup pages here, that's page three. We'll go to uh, page four, page five. Okay, you'll see here scroll direction, question mark, bottom up. This is a new feature that I requested, and I'm so glad that um, the developer was willing to do that. And I'll tell you what that, I'll show you what that does in a minute. I'm going to change it to top down and hit done. That was not available in previous versions. So let's let it uh, start up here, and then I'll show you what that did. Uh, while, while we wait, I'll just give you a backdrop. Um, most of the DX clusters, the Soda Spot pages, the Poda Spot pages, the spots come in at the top and work their way down. And then this software, up until this update, like you right, right here on the right hand side, you see that Soda Spot AC1Z there? That would have been in the bottom had I not made that change. And then the new ones, it would have worked its way up. Now you can see the DX clusters coming in that way too. What I was suggesting to the developer is that the DX clusters themselves and the Soda Spot page and the Poda Spot page, they put the newest uh, entry at the top, not the bottom. So you, you have the choice now. And what I wanted it to do is mimic the way it would look if I were to directly go to that DX cluster page. So you can see there as it's building, uh, it, the newer ones are coming in the top not the bottom. So it'll eventually fill up. And then after that, the newer one comes in the top and the oldest one goes out the bottom. Um, and actually it'll even allow you to scroll. There'll be a, an option to scroll. You can still see some of the ones that are off screen, but that's the difference. You go into that uh, menu page and you set it to scroll top down. So th that is a new feature that came in version 3.04. Um, just letting the DX cluster fill up. I, it's too late in the day, I believe. We're not going to see a lot of soda. In fact, that one's old. See the plus sign over there on the right. I, I did make a request because the soda one doesn't show you the decimal after the decimal point. You know, and some of the soda stations might be working, say, 7.061.5. It'll only show 7.061 here. The problem is the character limit because um, they're showing us their call sign and the summit ID and over here the amount of time that the post, you know, how old the post is. I actually voted to say, you know, I could live without knowing how old the post is. But see over here on the DX cluster, you can see this one's a minute old. This one's zero seconds old. So this is the newest one. I would have been willing to give that up to be able to see the incremental frequency here. See, there, there's enough room on the DX cluster to show. See, there's a 24.917.4, uh, you know, 28074.8. We can't do the dots, uh, the decimal uh, in uh, incremental uh, frequency over here on SOTA because it takes up some space displaying the summit ID itself. And over here, you've only got to have the call sign. 
So it's just, it's just a limit of the amount of, of display uh, characters that can be put over there. So my advice to you is if you chase Soda or Poda to, if, if, if you see one that says 7.061 and you don't hear them there, try 7.061.5, 14.061. You don't hear them there. Try 14.061.5. Just assume that over here there could they could be between frequencies. All right, but over here on the DX cluster you get them all, and now you'll see that the uh, it's full, and the newest ones will come in the top. Let's see if another new one comes in, and you can see that happen. But look at this arrow up here, and there's a number three. See, and now in the arrow number four. So watch this. If I click the arrow. It allows me to scroll down to see the ones that are old. Now I click it again, and I'm coming back and seeing the fresh ones. Okay, so a cool, cool new feature here in the, the Ham Clock software. Thank you, uh, Mr. Elwood Downey. Kudos to him for that. All right, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. This is N4H&H saying thank you for watching videos on my channel. Please hang around for another 34 seconds so I can acknowledge five of the long hauler Patreon team members who made this video possible. 73, thanks so much.